What a charming and compelling idea. Atoms as a tiny reflection of a planet with its circling moon. A kind of microcosmos featuring tiny electrically charged satellites orbiting the nucleus of the atom. This Rutherford and Bohr planetary model of the atom does provide us with some insight into atomic structure. But as the 20th century progressed, it became clear that inner space and outer space do not so conveniently mirror each other. This planetary model provides little or no useful information about the arrangement of electrons within the atom, something that is all important to the chemical behavior of elements. One weakness of this planetary atom has roots in a definitive 18th century experiment using light. When light is shone through a pair of tiny slits, it can create an interference pattern of light and dark on a projection screen, a phenomenon that can only be explained by the physics of propagating waves. Particles exhibit no such interference patterns when fired at tiny slits, simply producing a pair of bar-like strike patterns where the particles impact. This experiment seemed to forever separate the behavior of waves and particles. But in the early 20th century, Niels Bohr showed that light also behaves in a particle-like way, radiating not as a continuous wave, but in quanta of energy. Experiments reduced the light in the double-slit experiment until only a single quantum could be passing one or the other slit at a time. No way these particles of light could be interfering, and yet interference patterns could still be revealed using photographic paper to record the low light levels. Light behaves both like a wave and like a particle. In 1922, a Swiss student, Louis de Broglie, reasoned that tiny particles of matter might also show this wave-particle duality. Firing electrons into a double-slit experiment produces no interference results, as the slits cannot be made close enough to cause wave-like interference between the tiny electrons. But when aluminum foil is bombarded by electrons, the stream of arriving particles interferes with the stream of reflected particles to produce this pattern, a pattern strikingly similar to a pattern created by interfering energy waves when aluminum is bombarded not by particles, but by X-rays. If an electron is both wave-like and particle-like, where exactly does it lie outside the nucleus? The uncertainty of its position has led to the development of another model of the atom in which the electron is not a convenient orbiting particle, nor even represented as a wave, but rather as a fuzzy cloud that represents the probability that the electron is in one place rather than another. More probable that the electron is where the cloud is more dense, less probable in less dense regions. The classic orbiting electron model of the atom has been updated by a model in which a probability cloud of electrons surrounds the nucleus. A collection of many possible electron positions can further overlap this model. Niels Bohr showed how an individual electron could only gain or lose distinct quanta of energy and could therefore only possess particular energy each particular energy level translates to a stronger probability of electrons at particular distances from the nucleus. So, rather than a fuzzy cloud which fills all space around the atom, the probability clouds for many electrons, we can represent by probability shells that concentrate the possible location of electrons at a set of distances from the nucleus. 
Since these لأن shells are المستويات الثلاثية الأبعاد فإنه من الصعب معرفة طبيعة المستويات الرقيقة بدون قطع جزء منها هذا النموذج الميكانيكي الكمي للذرة ربما يمثل بشكل أفضل شكل الذرة أكثر من نموذج بور بل بالتأكيد قد يفتكر لبعض المعلومات العملية ليكون نموذجا مفيدا لبعض الاستكشافات الكيميائية ربما هناك أكثر من 100 إلكترون في أي ذرة محددة كم عددها في المدار الخارجي في الطبقة السفلية التالية أو في المستوى الأقرب من النواة النموذج الأكثر فائدة للإلكترونات في ذرة ما يمكن تحقيقه باستخدام ما هو معروف برسم بور رذرفورد البياني اترك نموذج موقع الإلكترون المحتمل هذا الرسم البياني يسجل عدد الإلكترونات الموجودة في الغيمة التخيلية وأي المستويات المدارية تحتويها تحديد الإلكترونات في مستويات مدارية محددة يلعب دورا مهما في تحديد الصفات الكيميائية لذرات مختلفة الآن نرى نماذج متعددة للذرة تعود لكرة دالتون البسيطة بعيدا عن ترك أي من تلك النماذج سنواصل استعمال أي نموذج يصور فكرة معينة عن الذرة بشكل أفضل سنقارن نماذج في بعض الأوقات لنذكر أنفسنا بأكثر من صفة للذرة بعد كل هذا تبقى هذه كلها نماذج فنحن لا ننظر لحقيقة الشيء Any convenient visualization of the atom that includes protons, neutrons, and electrons must be a distortion because the particles within an atom are so small and so far apart. If a correctly proportioned atom is scaled up so that one part of it, for example, the nucleus, is visible from where you are sitting, the other parts of the same atom on the same scale may be somewhere literally streets away from you. How do the different subatomic particles of the atom measure up? Let's look at the simplest atom, hydrogen, with a nucleus consisting of a single proton orbited by a single electron. It has been calculated that it would take this extraordinary number of neutrons or protons neatly packed and placed on a balance to measure one gram of mass. That gives a single proton or neutron a mass of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. That's pretty light. But not as light as the electron. The electron has a mass of 9.02 times 10 to the minus 28 grams. A proton is 1,837 times heavier. Electrons which orbit the nucleus add so little to the overall mass of an atom that for all intents and purposes, the mass of an electron is taken as zero. As for the size of these subatomic particles, the radius of protons and neutrons is in the order of 10 to the minus 15 meters. An electron is much smaller, with a radius less than 10 to the minus 18 meters. But the orbit of the outermost electrons of an atom dwarf the particles of the nucleus. Electrons may sweep a path as much as 10,000 times wider than the diameter of a proton to create the outer limits of the atom. Atoms of different elements differ in size, but they range around 10 to the minus 10 meters in diameter. The size of atoms counts little in everyday chemistry, but the mass of elements and compounds is often extremely important. The tiny mass of an atom is inconvenient when expressed in units, such as a gram. So chemists use instead the atomic mass unit, represented by this symbol. The atomic mass unit is equivalent to the mass of a single proton. 
Since atoms are built in multiples of whole protons or neutrons, these numbers cannot have a fractional value.